Everybody. So in this video, we're going to cover 16 stocks that are being heavily shorted and what we can do about that. In other words, how this is going to affect the stock and then how we can benefit from it as looking to squeeze them a little bit. So some of the techniques I'm going to go over here, uh, they're a little different. Uh, it's, we're going to go over the technicals of what's going on, but we're also going to drill down into the information so that you can kind of monitor the information and then make a decision on which way to go. So the very first one is CELH. And I'm just going to pull up this information. Uh, and the, just for points of discussion, so you understand where this is coming from, all this is going to be information that you can actually get yourself from shortsqueeze.com. I use de several different sites. Some are paid, some are not. But for simplicity's sake, this is where you can go and look at this data for free anytime you want. So I just want to go through this with CELH to start. And there's about 14 of these that we're going to go through. And I, and I do think that uh, talking to someone who thinks that they're being shorted and targeted, going through this, I, I do think that they're right. Uh, and we're going to get into how to benefit from that. So just to understand some of these key numbers, short interest ratio is days to cover. That means if all the stock out there was going to be covered at once, okay, it would take 1.8 days for that to cover. So two days of consistent buying is what you would have to see in order for all the shorts to cover. This shows the percentage of the short of the float. This shows that there's an increase or decrease. Right now we have a decrease. The short interest is 2.62. There's your floats out or your shares outstanding. And you can see how your short interest prior was 3.1 million. Okay. That gives you an understanding and a, a, a good description of what we're going to go over. Uh, on the number side, but what we're really going to dig into is the, you know, what to do about that. And this is just something from the newsletter, just to ignore it. Um, it's from a previous trade that we had in, uh, in the newsletter. So what I'm going to talk about in regards to CELH, just to start, you can see that the short interest, and this is what we're going to be looking for, this is one of the key factors, the short interest is decreasing in this, meaning the shorts were trying to short this all up in here, and it simply was not working. So now they're starting to get out of it. Now what's interesting about this is that as this continues to go up, okay, they're increasingly buying this. So this can actually accelerate to the upside where we're seeing some of these stocks getting hit. As they're shorting this one and they're decreasing their position, well, they've probably been decreasing their position for a while because it's simply not working. So where does that put us? Well, that gives us the ability to look at this a little, in a little deeper detail and try and find key levels. Now, let's start here, and I can leave this in the corner, and I'll close this. But let's really dive into this for a moment. So now we can see that the five, we're not even closing below it. Before we were opening on it, right? And now we're not even closing on it. So this is actually ramping up. What, what I would look for on this one in particular is the 62.23 level. We've been watching this for some time. If you get over this 62.23 level and these people are still short, you could see a squeeze here and you could see a panic. Now, if you get rid of all these indicators for a moment and just look at that level, you can see that we rarely get above it and stay above it except for the first time. So getting above this and staying above it for a couple days or two building a little bit of a base is going to force these people to cover. So that's the first one to keep in mind. Uh, and you're going to look at that level of 62.23. So the next one I went over yesterday in the top 10 video, uh, top 10 stocks to watch for the week. And we're going to go over this again in detail. But uh, I'll link that video at the end of this one just so you have access to it, uh, easy, easier access to it. So just looking at this, look at the decrease that's going on 30% in this stock. And what the stock's doing. Now let's throw in the indicators for a minute. So you have a 30% decrease. Stock's starting to move. And you can see if you get really technical here, which is what we're going to do, we're going to get really technical and talk levels in action. So what you need to do here, look at how we're not able to close below the 50 day anymore. Look at how the five and the eight were are now, right? We're closing above them. How they shifted from resistance to support now. So this is going to be the same as we talked before. Uh, you know, you have like a day of shorting out there basically to cover. But what you can see is if you get through this 157.49, and I said 158 in the other video, and I'm going to stick with that number, this could push and this could run. Now, if you get rid of all the bells and whistles, this is a huge bull flag, no matter how you look at it. 
this is a huge bull flag, right? And you should be able to see this, but we're just going to highlight it really quickly because I want to get through these and just give you as many actionable points as possible. So right there, okay? So you can see this flag, and here's your little flagpole. Once you break through this, I think you're going to head to this level. The fact that they are decreasing their position on this, the shorts are, means that their trade's simply not working, and it's time for them to get out. And so what you have to do when you're looking at these kinds of trades, we're going to say 158 on that one. What you have to do when you're looking at these kinds of trades and what I'm doing, some of these are going to be contra trades, meaning you're going to look at these and go, I'm not buying this because it looks like you know crap. That's the exact way you have to think, and I'm going to explain why. You have to think like where the short sellers are going to want to cover if it doesn't go down. They're going to want to cover at levels of support levels. While you're looking at the support level breaking because you're long, they're looking at it not breaking and saying, this is where we're going to cover. So that's why you're seeing a lot of these stocks, and I went over this yesterday with Planter and TIGR, why those stocks are hitting support levels and then bouncing because the shorts are covering there. So if you look at this one, okay, and this has just been, you know, nasty since that secondary was announced. Let's get rid of the bells and whistles for a moment. But you see how the interest in this is starting to decrease as we got to this level right here? We still have this downtrend, but what level we're holding is we're holding this 105. We're still holding it right here, here. You closed a little below it, but not much. So if you close above this level and you get above a, a key number here, which you've been unable to do, you've actually been unable to close above any bar since this has transpired, right? You just keep going down. So if you get a close above this level while you're here, this 111.25 level, you could see this accelerate to the upside to the, the 129 level fairly quickly. And if you put in the indicators, you can see what I'm talking about here. Okay, all of a sudden, we're catching up to this 5, the 8's coming in. You know, the 21's still pointing up. So we're, we're not in an awful shape here. So at 105 is really where your support is. If you were short, and you can see the short interest decreasing here, this is where you cover. So this could happen sooner than later, and I would definitely keep that on my radar, and I'd keep both those levels on my radar. Uh, this one was very interesting. DMTK, and let's just go through what's going on here. Look at the increase in what's going on here. 85% increase. Okay, you almost have a double. You have three days to cover on this, which it, candidly, when you're looking for short positions, it's a lot. I mean, it's not GME levels, but it's a lot. So what's happening here? And let's just get rid of these indicators for a moment and point out the obvious stuff, right? Okay, so here's your huge downward trend and the pressure that you've seen as they jam this down. Now, what you have going on here is you have another line here as well. Much shorter term one. There we go. Okay, so you can see this. Now, what you have going on here is you've got a little battle, but you did do an undercut of this low right here. Okay, you undercut it and then you bounce back off of it. So the first thing we want to see is breaking this down. But what's interesting to me at this level is, you see how you have this huge peak and then you have this other peak and this other peak? Look at how they're shrinking in magnitude, which has to mean that our RSI is going to be getting better. And we can just throw in the RSI on this one really quickly. I haven't looked at it yet. But based upon the magnitude of those moves, the RSI will be setting up in some way to give us some kind of indication on what may or may not happen. And it kind of is doing that, isn't it? Right? You see how you're here and you have this little bottom? And let's just throw that in for a moment. See, you have this little bottom right here. And then you undercut that bottom. And now you're jumping up above it. And now you're above this low, even though you're not there yet. So that's giving us one indication. The other indication that you're getting is from here. And you can just draw this straight across. Okay, you're right on the line for this RSI to turn. But what is most fascinating about this is the pressure is increasing and it's not going down anymore. It's actually cha changing as that's happening. So I would be looking at this and I'd be looking for something very simplistic here. If you're at 42 and a half here on this level, you could literally use that as a stop and look for a break above these levels. 
Okay, a, a solid break above these levels, and we can look at the indicators now and see if we can get you know real numbers. Get above the eight day on this. Okay, get above the eight day in a higher high, and that number is where's that number? Let's pull these expanders down again. Let's move this over. That gets us to where is it? There we are, 45.72. So call it 46. You get about 46 dollars here, and you could see a push. I, I find this I find this one very interesting, and you can kind of go across with this line, and I know there's a lot on this chart, and you can kind of see where this level is and how this was the turn and the breakout here, how we tested it here, how we tested it here. But with this increase, and now we can get rid of these indicators, but with this increase, that fact that we're not going down, this, this should be on your radar because this could be setting up to, not to just go straight up right away, but it could be setting up to base to go higher. Uh, MWK, you can see the pattern here. We broke down. We kind of respected it. One hump, two hump. The hump here is actually getting bigger, which I'm not crazy about. But what you're starting to see is you're starting to see short covering. So if they start covering here with two days out, 21% of the float is outstanding. This is something that you want to look at. Now, this is pretty interesting. When I was looking at this, and I'll throw in the indicators in a moment. We see this MWK line. You came right to the low end of where that bar broke out that took us to new highs on that breakout. And now you're flipping and holding. Now, for those that followed the candlestick video that I did, I'm just going to point this out because it's not complete yet. But there's a morning star pattern that's developing here. Okay, And so morning stars are very simple. Here's your low bar. Here's when you have your little part stick out. Roughly, this is a doji. You're looking for a flip above the higher high. Okay, and then that should take you to this level, which is 26 and a half. So there's a trade here, a very simple trade on this, where if you get above this bar, 24.92, call it 25, you can actually enter here at that 25 level and then just simply use this 22 and a half as your stop if that happens. But if you get above this and this 25 triggers, the people that are short this are going to increase their, their covering. There's no question about it. They want to short the breakouts. That's what they've been doing to us. They've been shorting these breakouts. They're not shorting at the support levels because there's a reason they're called support levels. I mean, it's not rocket science. So if you throw in the indicators, you can see that that'll get us above the 5, and then we can challenge the 8, and it gets us to the 21, which we've had issues with for months, but at least it gets us in there at a price that at least when we challenge this $30, we're up in it, and we're not chasing it. So that's how I would look at playing this one. I like this move a lot, and I like how they're slowly starting to cover and how that, that just happens at a support level. Um, so let's go to this one. This is a really thinner one on the short side, CLPT. And let's just go through this. So, you know, you're just seeing a, a small increase, a small percentage of float. But what got me about this one was how we are just setting up perfectly here. So let me just show you what I mean by that. So here's your breakout bar, right? So you consolidate it all the way back here. And let's get rid of these indicators for a moment. Let's pull this up. And let me just show you this number. So this is your 18 level where you broke out. You see how you cut it here? Then you try to get above it, couldn't, rallied, failed the rally, and then you're here. You're just simply trading between two support and resistance lines if you cut this all out. If you get through all the crap and you just look at this, you're trading between two support and resistance lines. You just th draw them properly. Okay, so I, I really don't need any more bells and whistles than that. So this area may get defended here. I, I don't know for sure, but it's an area that you're going to want to watch. You might undercut it again and then bounce back through it. But as tight as this is, you're between 18 and 23, and people that have been trading TIGR and PLT, you know, PLTR know exactly what I'm talking about with these levels. You're just bouncing around. You're buying the breakout, and they're selling the breakout on you. So what you're going to want to do here is look for signs that this is bottoming. This is not showing me anything yet that says that this is bottoming like the others. As a matter of fact, this is saying that it's going to get worse. So I need, really need to watch this level. The only interesting thing that's going on here for it is that you have these levels right here, and we've been holding them, 
But this rounding and the 50 rounding lets me know that this could, this one could increase to the downside. So just be aware of that. And also we've broken on the RSI. So you, for those that chart RSI or look at RSI, we did a video on it. Um, but you can see how we've broken here on the RSI, right? So this is leading me to believe that this one, there could be more pain with it. But you want to see if this 18 level is defended. I don't see this one as, as actionable as the other ones just yet, but it should be on your radar. Now, this one, TMDX, is really pretty fascinating to me. Um, and let me find out where I have all that information. There it is. So I really find this one just absolutely fascinating because you are just increasing at a pretty significant rate and you're just falling off a cliff. I mean, you're just coming straight down, but there are support levels here. And you're getting to a point where you've sold down so far so fast that you're almost heading for a snapback. Now, one of the key things that you can use when you're looking for snapbacks, and I'll just throw this in real quick, and we're going to get out of these indicators for a moment. See how you're riding the lower band of the Bollinger Band the whole way down? Okay, this can continue for some time, but when you snap back, you're going to revert to a mean. That mean is usually, and I use a 21-day, it doesn't matter, but the Bollinger Band is a 20-day moving average. So when I snap back and this snaps back, just to revert to the mean gets me to $37. Okay, And the way that we're coming in here, eventually, this is going to turn around and snap. Now, what are we going to look for in order for that to happen? Let's just go through some key things that can happen here. And what we'll do here is get rid of these patterns, and we're going to throw in these indicators back in, just the big ones for a moment. And we're going to get rid of the bands. So hopefully everybody followed that on the bands. But here's what I like about this. Even though the short interest is increasing, and right now you're catching a falling knife. But just look at these levels. So this is the top of that breakout bar. Okay, this is when we broke out of that base on TMDX and ran, consolidated, tested it here, and then ran, came back down. Everyone thought it was over, panics, but it's near the 50-day, and then takes out highs, right? So what's actually happening here is you have an undercut of this support level, okay, and now you're breaking, you're looking for that break above it. For those that follow me and understand that some of these patterns I talk about, I just want to point this out again, this is setting up to be a morning star pattern, okay? So in other words, I have cut underneath of it. I have my little doji here. Flipping this 27.75 could be a sign that this is a good place to take a position. You are grossly oversold here, grossly on the RSI. Um, this does not always mean that you're going to bounce right away just because you're down this low, but it sure means that you're getting to a point where the selling's exhausted. And what's interesting about this is we have a 31% increase in days to cover, right? So we have a short interest increase, and so this would increase by 31% too. And you look at these numbers. What's really interesting to me is you have a 31% increase in your short position, and I'm not going down anymore. I didn't go down on Friday. I opened the close at the same number. That's pretty significant that I'm getting an increase like this, and the stock's not dropping. So look for that 28 level, because I do believe in the Bollinger Bands. They do work uh, more on indexes, on a, a probability basis, but it does lead you to believe that you are due for a snapback and you could get to that 37, 38 level. Now this is one that we had uh, and we still have in the, the newsletter. And for those that don't get it, newsletters free comes out uh, three times a week. There's a, a link in the, the description. So let's just go through this real quick. Okay. So I have two and a half days roughly to cover. I have 38% increase. Okay, so right now we're short about 3 million shares, but look at this, and let's get this off the screen, and let's get off this off the screen, and let's just focus on this for a moment, and the actionable levels. Does this look familiar to anybody that's out there trading right now on what's going on with these levels? We just saw this happen with how many fintech stocks where they can't get above these levels, right? What is this telling you? Okay, it's telling you that every time that they try to rally this, they are increasing their short position on this one, which means this could be something that comes in next. Now you can see this little pattern and how it acted, but what do we do about it? You can't really add to this at this point. As a matter of fact, you need to be careful being in this one right now because 
they're increasing their short position and it's working. See how we're not able to stay above that resistance line? So you need to be careful on this one. I'm, I'm still long it and I have it in, in the portfolio, but I would not be adding to this until it proves itself and closes above here and I see solid volume on that. Other than that, we could roll and come back down and test the support line like 58 and three quarters. So just be careful on this one. Uh, it's showing signs of you know being a little bit toppy at this point. INTZ, that's not to say that it, it's not going to reverse. What we're going to watch there is we're going to watch for them to start decreasing their position. So when they increase their decrease their position. Now, why, why is this one in here? I'll show you. See that undercut? And let me get rid of these indicators. You have days to cover, 13.3. Uh, staggering number on days to cover, okay? Um, just absolutely, to me, just staggering considering the, the shares outstanding in the float, but it has to do with average volume. So that's pretty staggering, and that's why you see a precipitous drop so fast because of the volume, okay? And, and that volume incorporated with the percentage outstanding, it wouldn't look like that would be the case, but that's how that's calculated. So when you look here, see how you broke here and then you undercut? One, two, three. This doesn't usually end well, and you'll find positions like this, this particular pattern. You usually come up and then cross and come back down. But what you're seeing here with this, and I think this is pretty important, you can actually get to this level right here and see this level here, how it was rejected, came back down, right? How it flipped here and became support, how it tested here, flipped and became support, and you're doing it again. So essentially what you have here, if you really look at it this way, if you want to get technical about it, you have a huge base that's going on here. Now we can undercut this and continue to roll, and this is a very thinly traded stock, so you have to watch it. But if this gets above the 20 and a half level, you could see a major bounce back to this 27 and three quarters level on this because you are simply in a base here. People don't want to hear that, but that's what's going on here. You can see the two lines. Um, and also what got me about this one and why it's on the list, look at the amount of volume in selling. Okay, So just to, to point this out to people that aren't aware, if you look at something like this, okay, you see this volume right here. Okay, Here's your line, Okay, and you're here. You're at like seven to eight average volume. And usually when you see something like this, that's an exhaustion where people are just puking it out when they get out at any price. Usually that puts a bottom in. So I would watch this pretty carefully. But really what you're going to have to see is you can't really play this particular level. You're going to need, because of, of just the magnitude of this move, you're going to need a flip above 20 and a half on this one. A-E-Y-E. -E. Okay. So your percent of float short is 21%. You have a 36% increase in, in your short position right now. Now, let's just put that over here. Let's get rid of these for a moment. Put this in the corner. So you can see where I'm going with this already, hopefully. Here's your breakout bar. We can get rid of the indicators. We don't need them. So here's your breakout bar, 2432. Bonk, bonk, undercut. Okay. You want to undercut. You want to flush out and go from there. So this undercut, and as nasty as this is, could be what we're looking for. Simply flipping above this level could add pressure on this, especially if, if the shorts are increased, and take us back to this 29 and 3 quarters level, right to the top of this, and you can see how that level has been respected, right? So this is the range that you're in. So you're essentially contra trading. You know, people are trying to buy the breakouts. You're, on this one, you're basically looking at trying to buy uh, at the support levels or below it. And you want to flip this level. So that's going to put you at roughly $25. And you can see a push to there. And where you would be wrong is if it breaks out, takes out the low, which is 23. Now, this is another one that I really, I, I just really like the stock. Uh, I think they're a great company. But, you know, price is price. And so you have to trade that. But... You can already see, so this line's been in there for a while, right? You can already see where I'm going with this. Here's your resistance, this 55 and a half. Here's your trend line, 
Okay, look how you respect it. And this line was there before today. Look how you respected your trend line, and now you have a hammer bar above it with this bar here flipping above this. Right, you can do, you can call it what you want. I mean, it's more of a hammer trade than it is a morning star because of the position in the, on the candlestick. Very, very similar to this, right? Stocks have certain personalities. So you can see how you trade here, how that same pattern's developing here on a smaller magnitude. You don't have this. But look how much tighter we're getting as this is going on. So this is setting up. Now, if you throw in your indicators on this one, you could see where you might have some resistance coming up into it. But flipping above this level on that hammer is very interesting. What's really got me looking at this one uh, in particular is the fact that my short interest increased 24%, and I've got a green hammer bar on Friday where a lot of stocks were really getting hit pretty hard. So I think it's very important to look at that. And what I would be looking for on this one is very simple. I'd be looking for 47 and a half. And if I see 47 and a half and I have above average volume, this is definitely one that I'd be interested in and trying to squeeze them because higher high, or I'm sorry, higher low, higher low, higher low, lower high, lower high. This is setting up to move. And if I was short this, I would be very uncomfortable. And that's how you have to think. You have to think about how they are thinking, how the people that are short these, how are they thinking, what are they looking for? Because most of the people that are shorting these, they're just being, they don't like the company. They don't think it's a bad company. They're, they're just trying to screw with retail. There's, there's a difference between people that short stocks that are bad companies that are frauds and then people that are just being scummy, right? And I'm sorry to say that, but it's just, it's the truth. But so here you are at 1820 and you can just see how you're respecting that line over and over again. And you're trapped by this 21 day. Getting above this 21 day and closing above it solidly and then getting a confirmed move is what you need to see here. Why do you need to see that? Because we already broke above it once and failed. So now you need to confirm and show me what you have. Now, what I like about this is look at the increase in short interest on this DRIO. Over 86% increase, right? Stock's not going down. So they've almost doubled the short interest and we're not dropping. So again, this is one that would make me very uncomfortable because I'm getting a straight line on the 21 now, aren't I? So now I have a straight 21 and I'm increasing my short position and it's not working. Okay, that would make me very concerned. So it's definitely, there's no real love there with the five and the eight uh, and telling us anything more. So that would make me very concerned. Two days to, to close here. Getting above this 21 day and this 50 day is going to act like a magnet. So your key level here is going to be I would say 19 and three quarters would be the first one that you could look at. And then you really want to see it flip above this. So really looking at 20. So this is one that I really like, and I really like this stock a lot. And it's not a huge position on the short side as far as days to cover, because we all know the volume on NIO is sick. But look at the increase, a 26% increase. Now, but look at what's happening here. Okay. And... I want to keep these lines in, so we're going to have to blow this up, and everyone's going to, have to just have to remember it's NIO. Look what's going on here. We're respecting this channel, right? And we broke out of that channel, but these channels, that's why I always say it's very important to keep these in, okay? When you draw these in, it's very important to keep them in. When they, when they change or the trajectory changes, blow them out, but keep them in it otherwise. This is a falling wedge. Look how you popped out of this falling wedge, which we did here right? Hit the 200 day and bounced. Okay. Look at that bounce. Now that can only get me to the top of this, but that still gets me in there and seeing if, if we do finally reverse. It also gets me above this support level right here, right? So you should be able to see that too, but let's just put it in for a moment. See how you just came here and you went to the same number? Now you're closing up, you tested the 200, you came above it. You have this lower trend line here as well. And look at how you're respecting that lower trend line now. Okay, you flip back into this channel and you're back in your uptrend. And now you probably are going to test this 21 line. There's still a lot of overhead resistance here. But what this does do is get you in a place where it may bottom. And what would get me about this one is I have the, in, the shorts increasing pressure and nobody cares. It's going higher. So they're defending this 200 day. And I think that's important. So if you're looking for uh, an entry point into something, 
that might not be done going down, but or it might be done going down, but I don't know that we're going to rock it up right away because you still have this the, the overhang of this 41. Like there's there's some issues here with this being resistance, but it does get us into the trade, right? And then we just simply you know do our risk management profile from there. I like this a lot, and I like the action in it as the shorts increased. So I'd watch it, and the key level here for me that I'll be looking at is 36 and three quarters. DNMR, uh, we're going to run through two more here that I think are very interesting, but um, they're in no particular order, just FYI. So here's your short interest. Here's what you see going on. Um, you have an increase. You have 8.4 million shares now versus 6.1. We have a 36% increase in what's happening. I have a little doji bar, right? So I'm here. You pop above this, you kind of have a little, you got a little Morningstar pattern. I mean, it's not crazy. You're only talking about two points, but it gets you in there, right? And then if the squeeze does happen on these three and a half days, you're at least in the trade. So you can see how we respect this level, right? And I'll show you what that level is. And that's really what your stop would be. I mean, if you do close below there, it just means that, they're in charge and just get out of the way. But you see how you're, you hit there, here, and here? You never close below this level. You really never close below $30. So that's a really important level for the stock and watch that. And flipping a higher high gets you the 32, gives you a two point stop, and it gets you in this. And there's some other levels here that you really have to start looking at, but more importantly, you're gonna to have to get through this 37, 30, 37 and three quarters level in the 21 day. But definitely look at these patterns, especially the ones where the short interest is increasing and they're not going down anymore. That means that they're getting tired. And that usually happens around support levels. So this is um, you know, one that I threw in here that's on this list solely because look at the days of, to cover. It's five days to cover. Okay, We're not really increasing here, but you need to look at this on two sides. Okay, this should be bothersome to anybody that's in this. Okay, the fact that you can't close above 143 and uh, three quarters is an in, is is a problem. But what I do like is you have a breakout bar here, and now you're forming a little flag. So if you get pressure on this and you close above this 143.76, we'll call it 144 level, you could see it continue to push. So I wouldn't rule this out just because it failed. Usually breakouts on the first time fail anyway. So just look at this, but this is definitely one that I would consider. Um, and I'll, I will link that uh, stocks to buy video at the end of this, just so you can kind of go through those as well. Uh, but, and finally, this is the last one we're going to go through. And the reason that this one's appealing is look at the increase that's going on. We have a, almost a 200% increase. I know it's small, and I know it's a small share, but that's, that's pretty insane as far as an increase in the stock. So just keep a couple key levels here on this one, you know, and I know it's a thinner name, but this VVOS, like 817, we've not been able to close above since we broke it out on this. This volume is absolutely sick on what we're seeing here, and you can see some of these other support levels that are in here. So this is not falling off a cliff, but what they did do, and they did a great job of, is killing us on the breakout. So you can see the patterns that I'm showing you here. They're killing you on the breakout, and they're getting stopped, or when you defend these support lines, they're holding. So that's in a nutshell. There's 16 ideas there that look like they're ripe for a short squeeze. Uh, there's key levels there that you should be looking at and, and, and just writing down and putting alerts in. Uh, as always, you know, consider subscribing to the channel, clicking notifications, because what we go over is extremely timely. And uh, it's also, you know, two weeks from now, the information doesn't hold the same kind of value. That's it. Hope everybody enjoys their weekend.